What's the best way to treat someone who struggles with alcohol? Could it be psilocybin, the active ingredient in so-called magic mushrooms? Hi, if you're new here, my name is Dan Ronkin. I'm a licensed therapist and a person in long-term recovery. And on this channel, I explore psychedelics and addiction recovery. In this video, we're gonna cover two things. First, a brief overview of the most recent published study on psilocybin for alcohol use disorder, in simple language, I would add, and two, what the future could look like for this approach. There are options when it comes to treating someone with an alcohol use disorder, yet our current paradigm needs to shift because there are many people who are not getting the help that they deserve with the limited offerings currently available. For example, there are only three medications approved for alcohol use disorder from the FDA, which are modest in their long-term benefits. Or there are abstinence-only treatment programs that don't allow someone to define what it means to be in recovery for themselves. I'm thrilled to share the results of this latest study that will help pave the way for a new potential innovative treatment for alcohol use disorder. When you think of magic mushrooms, what images come to mind? High school, college years, camping trips, or other recreational parties? It turns out the active ingredient called psilocybin in these so-called magic mushrooms has the potential to help heal someone's overuse of alcohol. It might seem odd that you could use a mind-altering substance like psilocybin to help remove dependence on another substance like alcohol. This view is understandable, given that psilocybin is currently banned by the United States government as a Schedule I controlled substance, defined as having a high abuse potential with no medical use. But is this really true? No, it's not. Psilocybin is not known to lead to addiction or dependence, and historically, magic mushrooms have been used for thousands of years for medicinal and ceremonial purposes by various indigenous cultures. This study is the largest of any psilocybin trial yet published. It is a continuation of a small preliminary study which showed a positive outcome using psilocybin for people diagnosed with alcohol use disorder. This latest study is controlled with a larger sample size, meaning a larger number of participants. 93. The results of this study will be used to support the FDA process of potentially approving psilocybin for alcohol use disorder. Up next, we'll go over the results of this recent study. And while you're watching, make sure to let us know in the comments of your experience of using psilocybin for healing or any other questions I could answer. One of the most recent studies published in the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA, on August 24th, 2022, is showing great promise for this treatment. In this clinical trial, the results show a reduction in alcohol consumption by an average of 83% among heavy drinkers, following two doses of psilocybin combined with psychotherapy. Healing from our wounds of life is typically not a one and done event. It's a process. Another result from this study was roughly twice as many people in the psilocybin group as in the placebo group had given up drinking entirely. I'll be sure to add a link in the description of this video for those who want to deeper dive into it. I'd just like to share a point that feels important, which is it's very likely that either you or someone you know personally, either loved ones or otherwise, who have struggled with or even had even severe consequences with alcohol. Everyone deserves the right to heal from things that get in the way from them living their best life, including having access to psychedelic medicines like psilocybin. This study is a great step and part of a longer process. Where do we go from here? We now know that psilocybin is showing great promise, yet it's currently illegal according to the federal government. So the only way to legally receive psilocybin is through a research study. That said, at the time of this video, in the fall of 2022, there are laws that have been passed in, on the state level, like in Oregon, and they have legalized psilocybin for therapeutic use. The details are still rolling out and they're still in process. And other states like Colorado are soon to vote this fall on whether to make psilocybin available for therapy. And then on a more localized level, many cities have decriminalized psilocybin. Not legalized, but decriminalized, which essentially means it's the lowest priority for law enforcement. The study we reviewed today is a phase two study which measures the efficacy of the drug, meaning it actually produces the intended result. The full FDA process for clinical trials has four main phases. Phase one trials. Researchers test an experimental drug in a small group of people for the first time. Phase two trials. The experimental drug is given to a larger group of people to measure its effectiveness and safety. Phase three trials. 
the drug is given to a large group of people to confirm its effectiveness, monitor side effects, and collect information that will allow the experimental drug to be used safely. Phase 4 Trials The Final Phase Once the drug is approved for use by the FDA, Phase 4 provides additional information on the risks, benefits, and best use. In 2018, the FDA did grant psilocybin as a breakthrough therapy designation for treatment-resistant depression, meaning they are fast-tracking to help speed up the process and approve it for this condition. It's unclear if they'll fast-track psilocybin for alcohol use disorder. Time will tell, and we're still likely a few years out. I'll be creating a new video on a more in-depth exploration on psilocybin for addiction. Click subscribe to stay updated.